Steve Bannon is one of the top figures in the Trump White House. He's also a lightning rod for criticism following his stint as the head of Breitbart News. But Bannon's political activism began decades ago while serving his country in the armed forces. Correspondent Douglas Kennedy has the story. In 1981, after just a month in office, Ronald Reagan went to the Pentagon to give the Medal of Honor to a Vietnam vet. There's been no thank you for their sacrifice. President Reagan delivered no that speech honor. right here inside the Pentagon courtyard. The backdrop was to tell military personnel they mattered. It's time to show our pride in them and to thank them. In the audience that day was a young Steve Bannon, now special counsel to President Trump, but then a 27-year-old junior lieutenant in the Pentagon operations. Bannon's longtime friend, Sonny Masso, was standing next to him. The speech was a game changer. It was the first time anyone had ever shown appreciation. Bannon would later tell Bloomberg News Service, I wasn't political until I got into the service and saw how badly Jimmy Carter effed things up. I became a huge Reagan admirer. In fact, Bannon joined the Navy the same month Carter took office. I, Jimmy Carter, do solemnly swear. And in just six months, got promoted. An accomplishment he likes to point out he achieved on merit. I'm a naval officer. Ah, there you go. A real naval officer. Bannon spent half of his seven-year naval career on this now decommissioned Spruance-class destroyer, at the time called the Paul F. Foster. As a junior lieutenant, Bannon was in charge of engineering, overseeing maintenance of the ship's water purifiers and propulsion engines. Bannon then moved topside, where he became ship navigator. I understand one thing, mathematics, and the application of mathematics to the real world. Dave Zimba served with Bannon and was also a navigator on the Foster. How did they train you guys to think mathematically or empirically? Well, the whole process involves a lot of mathematical disciplines, uh, from geometry to trigonometry and analysis. Bannon was at the helm of the Foster as it accompanied members of the crew of Operation Eagle Claw the doomed rescue mission of the Iranian hostage crisis. So uh, this was a symbol of American humiliation, military humiliation, and some say it really changed the way Steve viewed President Carter. Very much so. He lo lost confidence, as a, lo a lot of the nation did. A few months later, Bannon was at the Pentagon, serving on the staff of the Chief of Naval Operations, under then-Captain Jay Arnold. His job carrying messages and writing reports to senior officers about the state of the Navy fleet worldwide. When I had a problem that, that I needed help on, he was a good guy to go to. It was when he got back home, and especially here at the Pentagon, his friends say he became more politically aware and politically engaged. So you ended up watching the presidential debate between Carter and Reagan with Steve that year. October 24th, 1980. It was amazing because he was on his feet pacing and, and it was a point counterpoint and he was quite animated in the debate. He also acquired some big ambitions, including telling friend Pat McKim he wanted one day to be Secretary of Defense. I thought that was kind of interesting because most guys who get out of the Navy and have political ambitions would like to come back as the Secretary of the Navy, not the Secretary of Defense. Big plans that prompted him to take classes at Georgetown University, earning him a degree in international relations, and would also send him to Harvard Business School, Goldman Sachs, and eventually have him become a leading thinker in the Tea Party movement. He really left the Navy, some say, with a drive to solve problems. That's correct. Uh, he left the Navy armed with a strong education and a drive to uh, get to the real problems that were important to him. Real problems he now has the power to address inside the world's most powerful house. At the Pentagon, Douglas Kennedy, Fox News.